Hello YouTube, this is Red Ryan Sucks, and uh, I'm bringing you guys another M15 8.4 here. Uh, looks like we're about to get started, so let's see what we open. Hopefully we'll be able to take this one down. Okay, so what do we see here? We've got a Borland Marauder, which is in red, which I really like. Um, I'm not too keen on green in this format, as I've said in previous videos, and I really like red. Um, Halod's Pilgrim is also a good card, but I would really want to be set up with more um, targets than pack one pick one. Uh, Scrapyard Mongrel is also a good red card, Risk of Swift Claw, but I think I'm just going to go with the Borderland Marauder here. It's a very strong red card, and I think that should set us up pretty well. I'm really avoiding the green cards like Invasive Species or Roaring Primadox. Um, I just don't think they're very good. Um, they're kind of slow, and uh, you really need to um, set up your defense as well. So I'm going to take the Borderland Marauder here. This is kind of a weak pack, but we still get a solid red card out of it, so we should be fine there. And what do we have next? We have another Borderland Marauder, um, which is definitely solid. We also have an Illusory Angel, very powerful. Our rare is a Yi Sun, but uh, he's green. Even though he's a pretty powerful card, he's not bomb status or anything. Um, so I'm deciding here between the Illusory Angel and the Borderland Marauder. The Marauder will allow us to stick to uh, one color and stay a little bit more open while still maintaining our aggressive red theme. Um, I think I'm probably going to take the Marauder, even though the Angel is probably the more powerful card, but I really I really like being able to cement myself in red in this format. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with doing that, so this is still a pretty close pick. Um, I'm not sure what I want to take. I found blue to be usually pretty open in this format, but I think I'm just going to go with the Marauder. Uh, it seems like the safer pick. We can really stay open here. Okay, so what do we have? We've got a Cranko's Enforcer, some more blue cards. So blue seems to be pretty open, but I think we're going to stick with our red aggression here. Cranko's Enforcer is a very powerful card in this format, um, and seeing it, even third pick, uh, makes me think that red is at least somewhat open. Um, there's also a Forge Devil, too, and a Bronze Sable, which we would probably um, be looking to wheel out of this pack. It's a pretty strong pack overall, very deep. Uh, Stormtide Leviathan is very powerful, but with our first two picks, it doesn't look like we're really going to be going in that direction. So I'm just going to take the Krenko's Enforcer here, passing some blue cards, um, which I don't think the particular blue cards that we've been passing really go well with our red cards, even though it does look like blue is a little bit open. I'm going to go with the Forge Devil here. Um, Mono Red is definitely a deck in this format. We could go with the Aeronaut Tinkerer, um, seeing his as blue has been kind of open and we haven't really seen much of out of any other color. But I'm just going to stick with our theme of picking um, solid red cards. Hopefully that'll work out for us. Uh, let's see what we have. We have a Flesh to Dust. That's a pretty strong signal that black could be open here. Uh, Gargoyle Sentinel is a solid colorless card, but we're pretty aggressive and it's not the best in an aggressive deck. Roman Goblin is also very strong. Um, we could take that if we want to stick to red, but I'm going to take this Flesh to Dust here. It's a pretty strong signal that black is open. Even though we haven't seen much black, it's possible that the packs just didn't really have it. So I'm going to take this Flesh to Dust. Um, I'm really looking now to pick up some black cards and cement ourselves in what we see, think to be open colors. Yeah, so Gravedigger is definitely a very good black card. Um, it seems like the first couple packs just didn't really have much strong black. Um, at least that I noticed. So I'm going to take this Gravedigger here. Thunder's D Denizen is a consideration. Um, the Appeal from Reality says that blue is still pretty open, but I think we kind of missed the boat on that. Um, and I, I don't really mind that much. It looks like we have a pretty solid deck lining up here. Gravedigger is always strong. Probably better and more of a grindy deck, but still. Uh, I'm going to take Crowd's Favor here. I've just found it to be very impressive, especially with uh, cards like Borderland Marauder. Um, Crippling Blight and Bronze Sable are also considerations, but um, I think we want to supplement our uh, strong red aggressive base. Um, Crippling Blight is definitely a consideration, but I think Crowd Saver and Crippling Blight are on the same general power level, um, and so I'm going to take the favor here because we're more red. It's a possibility that we still won't be in black, even though these two colors do seem pretty open. So yeah, uh, this is our first pack. There's the Nimbus of the Eyes and the Research Assistant, so blue is pretty open, but... Um, you know, we, we're we going to accept that we're going to be passing some blue cards and take this Simon Blood here. It's a very powerful card. Can finish um, can finish an opponent off in the late game, especially if we've been getting in with red aggressive creatures. Just take this Mine Rot here for the sideboard. And we're, we're pretty comfortable to be in red-black. I think these two colors are pretty clearly open here. Um, so yeah, we should be, we should be well set up. 
basically we haven't seen much green and white, which we're fine with. The Storm Leviathan wheel, that's pretty crazy. I'm just going to take it um, in case we open some great blue card and want to move into blue. Um, I don't think we'll be playing it, but you know it's a very powerful card, so taking it out of the draft is useful. Rumjig Goblin's a very good pickup here. Um, we're probably going to play it. We Rumjig Goblin's are pretty easy to pick up, so you know we might not run that one if you know what I mean. But it's still definitely a lot better than most of the picks we would be getting in that slot. And it really convinces me that red is probably pretty open. So here we'd be lucky to open a Cone of Flame. We didn't, but we opened a Siege Dragon, which is obviously very strong. It is a 7-drop, which is not the best, um, but I think we're just going to take it here. Can't really pass up a Dragon in Corset, um, corset Draft. Typhoid Rats, in which is familiar, are both good. We could wheel the Foundry Street Denizen, so that's that's um, something to keep in mind, that we already have one if we want to go for the all Foundry Street Denizen kind of mono-red aggressive deck. Um, there's good cards in other colors here, but we're not really interested. We're pretty set in our colors. I'm just going to take the Siege Dragon. Looks like um, my computer is kind of spazzing out a little bit here, so just um, kind of bear with it. Crowd's Favor is very strong, so is Frenzied Goblin, but we're not necessarily that aggressive, especially since we just picked up a Siege Dragon. We could definitely be more of a grindy black-red deck. I think I'm going to take the Crowd's Favor here. Current Chieftain is definitely a consideration, just because if we pick up an Evolving Wilds or something, we could definitely splash the uh, the plus one plus one in the activation. But I think I'm just going to go with the solid red card over the potentially the the solid but potentially good red card, just because card saver is cheaper, and I really do like cheap cards um, in my draft decks, as you guys have seen previously. Generator Servant is a good red 2-drop here. It can also power out our Siege Dragon, which is very good. I think I'm just going to take that. There's a lot of good cards we could uh, wheel from this pack. Fester Gloom is a powerful sideboard card, even though if we're red aggressive, it gets a little bit worse. Scrapyard Mongrel is good. Caustic Tar is a good finisher um, to bring out of the sideboard against control decks, something like that. Uh, but Generator Servant's definitely a good pickup there. Uh, Carrion Crow is also a good pickup for us. If our deck is leaning on the more aggressive side, it's, um, it's a good evasive beater. Blast Firebolt is a consideration. It's a solid removal spell, but I found that those are pretty easy to pick up. Um, you really don't have to devote high picks to them, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to continue to pick up our solid early drops. Which is familiar, I think, is what I'm going to take here. It's another early drop. Um, you know, it's just a solid card. Um, very, very medium power level, but there's nothing wrong with having those in your deck. Thundering Giant's a consideration, but I found that those are easy to pick up as well. Um, if you get enough Lava Axes, I found that the Lava Axe deck, the Lava Axe deck can really work in this format, but those you can definitely pick up later, too. Um, worth noting that, you know, blue is still pretty open, but we're really solid in our colors here. Mainly it's just so that we can kind of estimate what, um, what people in, what people next to us might be doing with their colors. I'm probably going to take Torchfiend here. Um, a third crowd's favor kind of loses a little bit, a little bit of its value. You, you really want to be using your crowd's favors with your aggressive two drops, and so since we already have two crowd's favors, I might as well pick up another aggressive two drop, if that logic made any sense. Basically, uh, creatures are just more solid. You'd rather not have a ton of tricks and no creatures. I'm gonna pick up another Torch Fiend here. Brood Keeper can be powerful, but we really don't have much to go with it right now. Rummage Goblin, also very powerful, but usually you only want one, and uh, Necromancer's Assistant has kind of just been underwhelming for me in this format, out of, outside of the green-black graveyard deck which I haven't actually drafted that much, um, but yeah. Forge Devil, um, I think, is what we're going to take here. There's also a Necrobite or a Fester Gloom. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Necrobite, to be honest, um, but it could be pretty good in our deck with a lot of our two drops. Um, and the second Forge Devil really does lose a lot of value. But I think, I think it's worth taking the Forge Devil just because Necrobite's... I don't know. I, I just am not a fan of Necrobite. And Fester Gloom really does hit a lot of our stuff, so it's not something we're going to be main decking. I'm going to move this Torch Fiend to the sideboard just um, just because we're probably not going to want to run more than one. Um, I'll take the Foundry Steed Jenison on the chance that we um, kind of pick up a lot of them in the last pack and maybe want to be a kind of hyper-aggressive deck. We have enough playables going on right now, but, um, you know, just in case that's an option... I'll take a Frenzied Goblin. That's very good in the Foundry Street Denizen deck, and it's um, playable in our deck, I would say. Um, uh, Frenzied Goblin into Borderland Marauder is a very good start, for example, 
with crowd server backup, something like that. So yeah, we're looking to be very aggressive. We'll probably still play the Siege Dragon just because, you know, it's kind of an out to the late game if the board gets stalled. Uh, looking to pick up probably some more removal spells here. Um, we're in Black Red, but we really only have this Flesh to Dust. Uh, you know, anything like Lightning Strike or obviously Cone of Flame would be amazing. Uh, this Blast Fire Bolt, you know, can do a solid job too, backing up our aggressive creatures with getting blockers out of the way. I'll take this Thundering Giant, probably just going to run it out of the sideboard. It's not a particularly aggressive card, even though, you know, it has haste. It, it can be good at getting in damage, but it's not really what I want to be, what I'm looking to be starting in an aggressive deck, just because it's a 5 drop. So yeah, um, going into pack 3, it looks like we have a pretty solid deck going on. I'll probably not end up maining this Frenzied Goblin unless we turn out to be very aggressive, but we'll see about that. Um, what we're really looking to fill out is, you know, obviously we'll pick up any bombs, but some more removal. Uh, looks like my client's doing some weird stuff. Let's hope we can get back to this. We opened a Soul of Theros. Um, it's possible we might just want to abandon our black now. Soul of Theros is just an incredibly powerful card. I think I'm actually going to take it because we have enough red cards that, um, that we can have enough playables, and Soul of Theros is just... Uh, nutty power level. So I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna take Soul of Theros here. Juggernaut is a very solid card that could be an option, but I think we're just gonna go with our gut and go with the bomb here. Um, we'll be able to pick up, you know, a couple of white playables and basically just splash the Soul of Theros, um, even if we're running enough lands to support a second color. But we we'll probably won't have enough white cards for the second color. Here I'll pick up a Generator Servant. Good with you know the stuff we have. Soul of Theros, Siege Dragon. Let's see if we have any white playables that we picked up late. Doesn't look like it. Probably be running this Forge Devil, maybe the Thundering Giant. We do have enough playables, though, so, you know, that doesn't look to be a problem. Um, so we're looking to be close to Mono Red just with a Soul of Theros, and that's, you know, that's powerful on its own. Most cards in this format I would not um, deviate from my plan, but Soul of Theros is just way too powerful to pass up, I think. Okay, so here this pack doesn't look like it has very much for us. I think I'll take a Foundry Street Denizen, since we're now looking to be kind of mono-red. Um, Foundry Streets are going to be good, probably, if we can pick up enough of them. There's not really much for us in this pack overall, so you know I'm not going to let that worry me too much. If we pick up, I think, one more Foundry Street Denizen, we'll probably end up playing them. We'll see. Uh, let's see here. Um, an Evolving Wilds could help us splash um, something like a Grave Digger which would be pretty good. Um, we can also take a Rummaging Goblin, but that would be our second one. It might be worth it, though. Um, I'm between the Rummaging and the Evolving Wilds. I think I'm just going to take Rummaging. Um, no need to splash something like Gravedigger. Um, just go with our mana plan right now. Hopefully we'll pick up at least a couple white cards. But, you know, not necessary. We could just be, you know, playing six planes in the Soul of Theros. That would be totally serviceable. Really, our main focus here is getting enough playables. You know, it could have been a mistake to take the soul, but um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what it does for us in games, and um, you know what it doesn't do, how it disrupts our mana. Not really anything here for us. That's kind of unfortunate. It's worthy noting that even if we had been in black, there really wouldn't still be anything in this pack. I'll just uh, hate a welcome turn here. That's a little disappointing. We're really looking to pick up some more playables. Okay, here's some more playables. We got a Goblin Rough Rider, which is totally serviceable and fine. I would like to cut one of our Rummaging Goblins, and I hope we don't have to end up playing the Foundry Streets unless we pick up, you know, ideally two more. Then I'd be happy playing the Foundry Streets just, could we, just because we'd be so aggressive. That said, we do have a lot of red creatures, so, you know, it could be worth just playing them anyway. Thundering Giant is also a playable if we really need to stretch. So yeah, here I'm going to pick another Foundry Street. I think we're playing our Foundry Streets now. Lava Axe might be okay out of the sideboard. So yeah, this is, look looks like a very aggressive deck. The Frenzied Goblin is good in this type of deck. We do have a Siege Dragon and a, uh, and a Blast Fire Bolt in the Soul, but other than that, our curve is insanely low, so that's good. Divine Paper, good out of the sideboard against fellow aggressive decks. Double Forge Devil is, I think, better in this deck um, than most, just because you can get early blockers out of the way. 
If you're in kind of a more mid-rangey deck, some of the one toughness creatures you don't end up caring about in the late game. But with this deck, basically any one toughness creature is still going to trade with any creature that you have, so it's worth getting all of them out of the way. Uh, here, we'll just take a congregate, I guess, for the sideboard. We've got 23 cards, so we're fine on that. Selfless Cathar, um, I don't think we'll be playing it just because, um, you know, we're probably not going to have many white sources. Wall of Fire, sure, it's a red card. So this was a little bit of a weird draft just with our colors and stuff. I think it was still worth um, abandoning our black for the soul, even though we could have picked up a couple decent black cards in pack three, which would have given us, you know, a solid deck. But I think just the bomb power of having a soul of Theros and a siege dragon with two generator servants is is very worth it. Take an Ornithopter, and that's going to be our last card. So this looks like to be our 23. We could run uh, the Thundering Giant if we wanted, if we wanted to cut something. But I think two Rumji Goblins is okay, if not great. Um, and yeah, hopefully hopefully this will get there. It's a little bit awkward. We're kind of going for the aggressive plan, and if not, we have the backup plan of our bombs. But, you know, that, that isn't always a plan that works out. It's kind of, um, kind of fallacious in some sense. But really, I think the power level of our cards will hopefully um, bring us a victory. Uh, let's see if we want to run the Thundering Giant over something. I don't think we do just because it's um, kind of an expensive card. Rummaging Goblin is better than Thundering Giant in the late game, I would say. So, you know, I would, I would really put these up here in terms of what part of the game they're affecting. Um, but other than that, I think I think this is really going to be our um, our 23. I definitely do want 23 lands and not not more, even though we have a 7 drop, just because we're so aggressive and low curve. Um, I think we want we want um, 7 white sources, uh, even though even though we only have the soul. 10, 10 red sources is just plenty, and we're not really going to have any problems with um, having mountains if we have 10 of them. It could be six, six white sources, um, but I think with that it's just a little too hard to get double white for the soul, and I think 10 mountains should be should be fine. Um, it's possible that, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm still kind of considering going with six white sources. I'm not sure where the math ends up on how often you get double with that, but really, really I think 10, 10 mountains should be fine, so we'll go with that. You know, and if, if the ratio turns out to be problematic, we can we can switch it up post board if we need to. So yeah, uh, that's going to do it for the draft portion. Um, as always, there will be a link in the description for round one, and uh, you guys can click ahead to that, and I will see you in round one.
All right, hi guys, we're here for round one. Uh, we've run the, won the die roll, so that's always a good sign with our aggressive deck. We would like to play first. And this looks like a pretty serviceable hand. We've got a two drop and a three drop and a semi removal spell, so we'll keep that. We've also got perfect mana, which is good. Uh, we'd rather not draw too many more lands unless we draw like our siege dragon or something, but you know, um, anything really goes. With our rummaging goblin, we can always discard the lands, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Let's see what colors our opponent is. With such a um, linear deck like this, it is important what colors our opponent uh, is running. Um, blue, so we could have Coral Barrier or something like that, which um, actually our hand lines up pretty well against with our Forged Devil and being on the play and all that. So yeah, let's yield here next turn. Let's see if he plays a Defender. We can probably Forge Devil it if he does. But it could be something like a, um, I'm actually not sure, like a Rune Claw Bear, but he's he's blue black, so it doesn't look like it will be. Research Assistant is fine. Our guys can get through him. The question is whether we want to. Uh, I don't know. Um, I was gonna um, consider whether we wanted to play the Roman Goblin or the Borderland Marauder here, but I think um, with the Foundry Street, we're just gonna want to play that and the Borderland Marauder here, get more pressure on him. Next turn we can go Rummage Goblin and Forge Devil, which should be pretty good. The Vandrus Street probably won't be able to attack for a while, but that's that's fine. Um, we can, I guess if he plays a, a one toughness creature, uh, next turn we can play two creatures and threaten the trading with the Foundry Street on the Research Assistant, so maybe, maybe it'll be able to attack next turn, we'll see. We'll see what our opponent does. A Coral Barrier would mean um, that we can still attack, but our opponent will be trading some stuff off next turn. Hopefully this Rummaging Goblin can get us some get us some action. Because if our opponent plays some good blockers, he could he could be pretty well set up here to stop our aggression. Let's see what he plays. Could be nothing. Could have a um, dissipate up. Yeah, that looks to be it. So if our opponent has a dissipate up, I think we're just gonna um let's see. So if we play Rummaging Goblin before combat. Um, and then play Forge Devil, we'll, we'll be able to attack with our Foundry Street, but that doesn't seem really worth it. I think I'm just going to attack with both of my Borderland Marauders. If he does something, then we can play Rummaging Goblin post-combat, and if he doesn't, then he's probably taking six, so that's fine with us, and we'll just pass, not not let him use his counter spell. I don't think I yielded, but I'm just going to make sure. So yeah, um, let's see what he does with these attacks. Yeah, so he's playing something. It's a quickling, bouncing his research, research assistant, and trading off with one of our guys. That's fine. We'll be able to um, resolve the rummaging goblin. Should be should be pretty good for us. We can discard the other rummaging goblin probably. That'll probably be what we do. He takes three, goes down to fourteen. Yeah, so let's play the rummaging goblin. Hold the forge devil. No reason to play it now. And yeah, we'll yield here. If I draw a land, I'm probably gonna play it and discard the rummaging, the other rummaging goblin, um, just because we have, we do have the two bombs in our deck. Yep, he's playing the assistant. He could have appeal from reality here, something like that. Looks like he's playing a, another creature. Okay, so our our forge double can hit that welcome turn pretty nicely, and um, then our rummaging goblin. Eh, if we, if we yeah, so we hit another red creature. That means we can play two red creatures, pump up the foundry street, um, and threaten the trade with the research assistant and still discard a Rummaging Goblin, so that's good. Yeah, we're going to Forge Devil. Forge Devil the Welkin turn. The Foundry Suit's going to be a 3-1. And if he doesn't want to take 3, he'll have to trade it with the Research Assistant, which is good because the Foundry Street um, obviously goes down in value after, after some turns have gone by. And let's go to Attackers. We can attack with these two guys, see what he does. Yeah, so he's, he's going to trade his guy off, that's fine. Um, he takes three, and then we have a decent board presence here, although they are 
all pretty um, pretty weak creatures in terms of if you play some 5-drop or something. But hopefully we'll be able to dig to something to answer that with the Rummaging Goblin. Um, important to note here is that we can... Um, I'm just going to discard now so that I can yield. Um, important to note is that our Generator Servant allows us to cast our two bombs that are in our deck um, pretty well. And let's see what we draw here, see if we have any better attacks than just the Borderland Marauder. We'll discard this land. Um, the question is whether we want to play our mountain here. Actually, I'm going to wait till post combat to play this. Um, so yeah, we'll just attack with the borderland. If he doesn't want to trade it off for his five drop, then he has to take another three. Basically, just hoping to get him down pretty low, so that we can maybe attack with all of our guys, something like that. D doesn't look like he's blocking, so maybe he has some plan on how to use that Nimbus. We're just going to play our Rough Rider, um, and I think hold the land in hand uh, just in case right now, um, just in case we want to rummage it away. If we draw a land next turn, we can still um, cast our Siege Dragon if we draw it with the generator, so that should be fine. Let's see if he has some big play to kind of stabilize here. Looks... okay, so it's a Mercurial Pretender copying his Nimbus. That's fine, we still have attacks with our two guys, maybe he'll trade them off. That does make sense as, why, as to why he didn't want to trade it off last turn, because then the Mercurial Pretender wouldn't have any targets. Um, but yeah, looks like we're in a pretty good position here. He only has two cards in hand, so not too much he could do to really stabilize. We're going to discard, see what we draw. Frenzied Goblin, that's that's very good for us. Um, we're going to attack with our two guys, and if he trades off one of them, then he's only going to have one blocker next turn if he does play a creature, and if he doesn't, he's just not going to be able to block next turn. So we're looking to be in a pretty good, good, pretty, uh, good position here especially since our opponent is at 8, and if he doesn't trade off both of his guys, he's going to 5. So yeah, he'll trade off both, um, and then even if he does play a creature next turn, we still have the Frenzied Goblin. Um, we're going to develop our board with the Torch Fiend, even though it's not a great card. Um, the Frenzied Goblin lets all of our creatures get in, so the 2 damage from the Torch Fiend is going to be very good. And yeah, we'll see if he can he can answer this board. This could be a big play from him. Um, something like the Storm Tide, even though we did hate it from the draft, another one could have been opened. Um, it's always interesting, you know, what the incentive is for being a control deck like this. Um, it does look like he's a little bit more tempo with the Welkin turn and the Quickling and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, it, it, he could not really be control and just kind of be a Flyers deck, which it looks like we're pretty well matched up to race against. I don't think we have much to board in. Um, all of our cards seem to be at least decent against him, some other stuff, probably. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason to bring in Lava Axe or Thundering Giant, so we're just going to submit here. I rarely see us citing out our Soul of Theros unless our opponent has, I don't know, some particular answers to it, like two Pillar of Light or something like that. We might want to consider citing it out for the black cards. Um, but, you know, 95% 95 of the time, that doesn't seem like it'll be worth it. Uh, this hand, I think, is a mulligan. We just don't really come off to an aggressive start, uh, and sack our, sacking our Generator Servant for the Blast Fire Bolt just isn't worth it. If we had one of, one of our bombs, it would be good with the Generator Servant, but I think we just have to mulligan this, considering that we don't. We're on the draw. I think we have to keep this hand on the draw. It's got a very aggressive start. Even if we just draw one land, um, we'll be able to really power some stuff out. So I think, you know, this is a risky hand, definitely, and it's very possible that we could just lose here. Um, but being on the draw, I think I think we do keep it especially on six. So let's see if we get there. We do. We draw a land, so hopefully we'll be able to curve out and really wreck our opponent here. That's obviously very fortunate, but you know, um, I do think the hand was a curl keep either way. Good, no research assistant. That's that's very good for us. Um, yeah, and we drew a planes even, so this hand looks to be working out great. Hopefully the Krenko's Enforcer will be able to get in a lot of damage after we've gotten in some early stuff with our with our creatures. Our opponent could have something here. Blue Black has a lot of instants, but um, you know, Peel from Yadi doesn't do anything, Quickling doesn't do anything. So yeah, looks like we'll just be beating down here. Let's see if he has a creature to block. He does not, so that's a little bit of a weird hand to keep. For him, I think, unless he has something this turn. We do want to play a creature pre-combat. Um, I think it's going to be Rough Rider just to try to get in more damage. Um, Enforcer can always come down later after he's maybe used an answer or something on one of our guys. 
Because um, if the Enforcer goes unanswered in this matchup, uh, it's going to be really hard for him to, to win quickly enough. Hopefully he just takes a bunch of damage here. Yeah, he does, so we might just have um, too fast of a draw for him this game. This is a pretty good mulligan, considering we drew, drew the lands right in a row. Crippling Bite, that's fine. It's still a 2-1 attacker, I think. Illusory Angel, oh, that's that's pretty strong. Um, I think we just want to attack with all of our guys just to get in damage here. Um, then we can play our Torch Fiend and our Borderland. Yeah, so I think I think we just want to use our guys to get in damage. So yeah, let's play, play these guys before combat um, to pump up the Foundry Street. Um, he'll probably block the Rough Rider and take five, it looks like. So, you know, I'm, I'm fine with trading the Rough Rider for five damage. Um, that seems like a good good sacrifice for us. Because then we'll have the Enforcer to hit him from eight down to zero, hopefully. And that's assuming, you know, that we can't even attack next turn, which we probably can just to sacrifice another guy to get in some more damage. The Illusory, the illusory Angel was a pretty good play there, but I think we'll still be able to get through it um, fast enough. Probably a Nimbus here. Pretender to copy the Angel. Okay, so he does have two very good blockers here, but we'll be able to get in, um, it looks like, at least four damage here, and then he'll be at four and we'll have a Krenko's Enforcer. We're really just going all in here, but that's fine. If he has an answer to the Enforcer, then, you know, we're probably in trouble. We're probably not going to win, but we have to accept that. This is the game plan that makes the most sense for us. Might not have been correct to play that land, but we do have some expensive cards in our deck, so... Let's attack with everybody. He's going to block um, probably the Borderland and the Torch Fiend, I'm guessing? Yeah. Take four, go down to four. And hopefully in two turns he's dead if he doesn't have an answer. Yeah, we definitely shouldn't have played the land uh, pre-combat just to bluff the... Uh, just to bluff our uh, crowd's favor. That, that was a mistake. He could get aggressive here. Um, hit us for eight. You know, that's a very powerful... That's a very powerful play. Frost Link's tapping down our Krankos Enforcer. Okay, so we might be in a bit of trouble here. I'm curious as to um, how many Illusory Angels he attacks us with. Zero, one, or two. It could certainly be two if he has another play here. Void Snare, possibly. Yeah, looks like he's going to attack us. No? Okay, no attacks. That's good for us. Um, we'll play Foundry Street and pass. Basically, we're just going all out to try to get in damage here. And hoping that he can't he can't race us. Doesn't have an answer to the Enforcer. Doesn't look like he has a permanent answer to it, but this Frost Lynx might give him time to draw that. Quickling at end of turn? Yeah, that, that's definitely a problem, I think. No, it doesn't have a quickling, okay. That really did look like a quickling. He he was tapping his mana before, um, probably to play around a removal spell drawn from us. Another reason to hold the planes in hand. But, uh, doesn't look like he actually has it. So I'm wondering what that could have been. Rogue's Gloves. Okay, so that's gonna, that's gonna dig him a little deeper. Oh no, I can actually kill it with the Torch Fiend, so that's a consideration. I'm just going to wait to see what he attacks with, um, you know, where he equips and what he attacks with before deciding whether or not I want to sacrifice the Torch Fiend. So he's not equipping. Um, not a problem. Doesn't attack us with anything, so yeah, we can we can keep our Torch Fiend around for now. That's fine. We do have a Soul of Theros, only five lands, um, but, you know, if, if we draw another land, that should be able to close out the game for us. Uh, let's see... Um, what are our attacks here? I don't think we want to attack with anything but the Enforcer. Things just get eaten, basically. Nothing really to bluff. So yeah, let's just tell him to have an answer for the Enforcer and see if he can. Looks like he does. Yeah, so he's going to 1 here. Um, that's fine. We have, I think, a couple outs. Um, he can't really attack with anything, which is good, and if we you know, draw a land, our soul will probably be able to take over the game. Especially because he didn't have another answer to a threat other than Ulcerate. We'll see what he has here, though. 
he can return his um his pretender copy the frost links that's a play but uh not not a quick play i guess i would say so he's gonna equip that's fine we probably want to sacrifice our torch fiend just to um avoid him drawing too many cards so yeah, he's gonna attack with that i think we, i think we do want to sacrifice the torch fiend soul of theros is our plan here so yeah let's do that After this round, I'm probably going to restart my Windows system just so that Magic Online goes a little bit faster. And yeah, we'll take four. Hopefully we draw a land, which is kind of strange to say when we have five lands, we're the Foundry Street Denizen deck, but Soul of Theros is a card that makes you do weird things. Okay, so we drew a Crowd's Favor. Doesn't look like that does anything here. We're just going to pass. Two hits from the Illusory Angels is going to kill us, most likely, unless we draw a land uh, next turn. I know actually it looks like that would kill us anyway. So yeah, we might just be dead here, unfortunately, even though he's at one. I don't think we have any outs um, even to him being at one. We don't have a Lava Axe or anything in our deck. So yeah, this was a close game. Um, if we had drawn a land that turn, we probably would have won just because Soul of Theros is so powerful. So we've got a land here, but he's just going to hit us for eight. Um, I don't think we want to show him the soul. Um, it might affect his sideboarding decisions, and it's a pretty easy attack for him. Nothing really to be scared of, so I'm just going to yield here. Pretty strong play by our opponent. Didn't really give us any opportunities to draw anything, and he, he hit us for four with the Illusory Angel, um, which set up the this double attack for eight. So yeah. Let's see if we can take game three. That Frost Links is pretty good. I don't. I still don't think there's anything we want to bring in. Lava Axe would have been good there, but um, you know it can't be too results oriented. Everything in our deck serves a role, and there's really nothing that's particularly bad in this matchup. Hopefully we can get the Generator Servant draw, that would be pretty sweet. We could just go into our Siege Dragon or something. We'll play first. We do have two Generator Servants and two Bombs. This is an interesting draw. It's, um, I think, very similar to uh, the seven card hand we had last game. Um, but I think this one's a keep, because we're on the play and we have a Rummaging Goblin to kind of find one of our Bombs for the Generator Servant. Um, and we can always draw our aggressive creatures, so I, I, I'm going to keep this. It's not great, but the Forge Devil might be able to get some value. You never know. And the, Rom the Roman Your Goblin really does help this hand out. So we're going to keep it. Looks like he's considering long and hard about his hand. That's probably a better sign than not. Go to six. Go to six. I suppose we could be rooting for him to make a bad decision. People often keep when it's really not correct. This could be one of those. I mean, the the uh, the keep we're making. Um, it's important to stay vigilant about your decisions. But I, I still think this is correct. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, so he kept his 7. Um, not sure... That's a good sign or a bad sign. We're just going to play our cards out. See if we can beat him. He could have like a low land research assistant hand. That's one hand I could see him tanking on. Another one would be the high land. Um, you know, many land, like a five lander or something. Yeah. Looks like to be the research assistant without black hand. That would be my guess right now. If I tried to read him. It would be really great to draw either our, either our soul or our uh, siege dragon here. That would mean that we would have a really, really good chance of taking this one down. The rummaging island hopefully helps dig us to those. So yeah, here's the turn where we'll see um, what his hand was like, most likely. So he's got an evolving wild, so it's probably kind of a slow hand which we can't really take advantage of with this hand. Um, the Eraser Assistant is doing a pretty good job of brickwalling us. He could have also drawn the Evolving Wilds. I'm, if I had to guess, I would say that he doesn't have many more lands in hand, and he drew the Evolving Wilds. Um, 
because, yeah. So yeah, we're going to describe this mountain, see what we draw. If it's a soul, we can play it. It's a blast fire bolt. Okay, so I think we'll we'll just play out our torch fiend here and pass. Our draw isn't really lining up well against his unless we draw one of our bombs, which is kind of what we could see even from our opening hand. Um, having two forge devils is not great. We can always pitch one with the rummaging. Paragon is fine. He's not really in a position to attack us anyway. We're kind of just staring at each other. He has more cards in hand, but we have a Romaging Goblin. The question is whether we want to discard this Mountain or this Forge Devil. Um, I think we want to discard the Mountain just because we can double Forge Devil the Paragon. And that seems like a, a decent play. We drew a Mountain. Um, the question is whether we want to double Forge Devil. I think we do. Um, it doesn't look like he has a Welkin turn or he would have played it. Um, and the Forge Devils aren't really getting any other value besides us discarding them and rummaging, and I think it's better to kind of get some tempo here. We can, all, we can also, if we get to enough mana where we can Blast Fire Bolt, uh, we can get the Research Assistant out of the way, even though it's kind of the worst target ever for a Blast Fire Bolt. Um, we might just have to suck it up and do that. I don't think I'm going to play my land here, although I could. Yeah, I think I actually am going to play my land here, um, because, because of the potential for next turn Blast Fire Bolting, his research assistant, assuming he doesn't have another play. Um, and, you know, if we draw another land, we can always pitch that one with Rummaging. It is it'll, it is a little bit close. This also lets us leave up Torch Fiend, which is relevant, if not super relevant. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to play my land, though. I would much rather um, play, Bas play Blast Fire Bolt with my lands instead of my Generator Servant. So I think we do want to get to 6 this game, which is why I played that land there. Let's see if he has another land. It's very possible that he does not. Rogue's Gloves, okay, so we left up Torch Fiend, which is good. Um, I should have turned off my yields there, I think, but that's okay. Uh, here, let's discard this Generator Servant, not really doing much for us. If we draw a land, no, we didn't. So, this Borderland Marauder can get through the Research Assistant. Um, I'm just gonna play it out, leave the Blast Bolt in our hand. Um, and we really don't have any attacks. Um, if he goes for anything fancy, we have the Torch Fiend for the Rogue's Gloves. We don't need to do it now, though. We'll just see what he does. The Rogue's Gloves is really not important now, so I'm, I'm just um, keeping that as a plan for if he does something that makes it relevant. We're going to click through, though, not yield, just because we have that available to us. It's a Frost Link, so he's, getting, so he's going to tap down our Borderland with that. That seems fine to me. Nothing really we can do. I still think we want to keep our Torch Fiend. Keep it around. Really, we're just digging for either our soul or our... Uh, or our dragon here. Didn't get there quite yet. Um, we do have a crowd saver, though, so that's pretty good. Um, we can attack with our generator and our Torch Fiend. And uh, if he blocks one with the research, we can... Saver. I think that's definitely worth it. So let's go to our attacks. Um, the Frost Links um, can block one of them, but that's just a trade, and we're fine with the trade here. We're not going to yield. We're just going to go to attacks. I tend to use yield too much. I should probably avoid doing so doing so much. Um, I especially do it when the client is being slow, um, which is a problem. So yeah, let's see how he blocks here. He could have Ulcerate, uh, which would be a big deal, but I think we have to accept... Ulcerate. It would be a two for one, and he would keep his research assistant, but you know, that does take a card out of his hand and stuff. Looks like he doesn't have it. What did I miss? Did I target his research assistant? Oh man, yeah, it looks like he did. Okay, so that was obviously dumb. Um, I thought I had clicked on my Torch Fiend, but oh well. Yep, misclicks happen sometimes. We're just going to try to um, play through our mistake. I don't think we want to discard the Blast Fire Bolt. Um, it's just going to do some work for us if we... Okay, Chasm Skulker. Yeah, we need to... We want to kill that as quick as we can. That card can get really out of hand. Looks like he just drew it. 
It's possible that he still has ulcerate and just saw that we uh, that we targeted the research. Torch fiend. Okay, so we can't draw land here. It seems. Um, I'm fine with giving him uh, one. Giving him one squid. So I think we can wait till next turn to pop off this blast fire bolt. Um, even if we have to do it with our generator servant. The goal is to not have to use our generator serpent for it. We don't really have any attacks here. Yeah, this is kind of unfortunate. We're just building on a board, but the Forge Devils are basically irrelevant here. Um, don't really have much going on. We just need to see our soul or our dragon and hope that can win us the game. See if he has any attacks here. This could be the turn where he starts attacking. No, it doesn't look like it. What does he play? Encrust on a rummaging oven. That is a problem. Okay. Uh, I think we might want to torch fiend away the rogues gloves right now. Um, it looks like he might soon start attacking, and the torch fiend isn't really doing much. So yeah, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna just trade it off for that right now. The Rumjing Goblin was really, really our plan to win this game. So yeah, we drew we drew the planes for a blast fire. Um, I think we just have to do it on the Chasm Skulker. That thing just gets too out of hand. Still don't have any attacks. You can see we just trade the Frost Links for the Borderland and we'd be in the same position that we've been for a long time. So yeah, I'm just going to pass here. We're just fingers crossed on soul. We discarded a rummaging earlier, right? Was that the other game? Another rummaging. Drawing our second rummaging would also be good here. Yeah, I think that was the other game. So if we drew our second rummaging goblin, that would kind of get us back on track. A little slower, mind you, but should be fine. He he's gonna draw land here at some point. We've been kind of lucky that he hasn't drawn one yet. It's kind of kind of unfortunate for him. Um, I really do expect him to draw one very soon. Scrapyard Mongrel, okay, so that can attack. Uh, actually, let's see, do we want to attack with our Borderland Marauder first? He would trade it off for Frostlings. Yeah, I think we want to attack with our Borderland first. Just gives him less options on blocks. Scrapyard Mongrel is definitely one of the better cards we could have drawn there besides our bombs. Not complaining. But really, he's at 18, like, you know, he's going to draw out of it before um, before we can get him down low, even if we do have some decent attacks with our Scrapyard Mongrel. Really, the way we're closing out this game is presenting a threat that he can't answer, which ha is going to have to be our soul or our dragon. I know I keep saying it, but that's really just all that can be said about this game. We just need to draw one of those two. Also, right, that's fine. Really doesn't change the situation all that much. Doesn't look like he's trying to land yet. Although, you know, he could, he could be thinking about it, but most people just slam, slam it down when they do. But yeah. Rough Rider, okay, so that, that can attack. That's good. We'll play it and just pass. Not a very interesting game. Yeah, there's the land. Really past its time even, yeah. So Master Predicaments is very good here, obviously. That puts us on a shorter clock for drawing one of our bombs, which we didn't. Yeah, and we'll just pass. It's an interesting question, um, which which converter man cost we pick. I'm inclined to just do um, four or below, just because it could be such a blowout if he gets to play one of his high drops that's been sitting in his hand for a long time. So yeah, I think we're just going to pick four or below. Going to guess that it's five or above. I think that's how that works. 
So yeah, we'll take take four here. The window's starting to close on um, Siege Dragon. It might just be Soul that can get us out soon. So yeah, we're going to guess that the converted mana cost is greater than four because if we get it right, he can't cast it. So he's probably going to be able to cast a card that's four or less here. Most people just pick a four drop that's in their hand. But it looks like we guessed right, so that's good. I wonder if he has to reveal it. I don't think he does. Yeah, no. Um, okay, so this pretender is going to copy the master. We really need to draw either Siege Dragon or um, or Soul this turn. And do we hit it? Siege Dragon. Okay, so that's that's good. Not as good as Soul, I don't think, but um, still very good. I think we have to leave it back. Um, he probably has some some way to deal with it, but there's really nothing we can do about that. Attacking with the with the dragon would um, would let's see. Two damage to each creature without flying. So the master would still be able to eat something. We'd get attack back for eight. He would take five. So it's 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 a little bit interesting if we wanna if we want to attack with the dragon or not. Um, let's do the math. So if we attack with our dragon, the research assistant has two damage on it. The squid dies. Um, the assistant can trade with a forge devil. The master. Um, the copied master can block a Rough Rider, so he'd be taking 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, going to, um, going to 6. Uh, does it deal damage to him? Doesn't, right? Yeah, no. So, um, so he'd go to 6, then he could untap, attack us, and probably play a blocker. So, it's tough, because... If he has an answer for the Siege Dragon, we're just going to get hit for 8, and so if he has an answer for it, it's better to, for us to get this attack in. But if he doesn't have an answer for it, we're just sitting back and waiting on drawing our soul. But the question is whether that's really a viable plan, or whether this just gives us the best chance to win the game. So we would be left with a Forge Devil, a Rough Rider, and a Dragon. This is this is a very very tough spot. He could also not um, not block with the assistant, but that doesn't do a whole lot. We would really have to be attacking with everybody, I think. I th I think we have to attack here. I think that's just the the play that gives us the most options to win, because um, it puts him at six, and then um, Really, he has to leave back both of his guys if he doesn't have an answer. And if he does have an answer and we leave back our dragon, we're just dead, essentially. So yeah, I think this plays best into him not having an answer. I, th I think I said that right, but I'm not sure. Yeah, we have no, no other things to do, so we'll just yield here. Let's see what he does. Okay, so he's going to leave his assistant around, go to five. Um, that means the Siege Dragon's lethal, but it probably also means that he has an answer for it, and then we're going to get hit for another 8. He could have a Chump Blocker like a Nimbus of the Isles. Flesh of Dust, yeah, so he has an answer. Um, if we left our Dragon back, though, um, it would have been just as bad. And this at least lets us, um, you know, if we draw like a, a Crowd's Favor, we can, uh, yeah, so he's just attacking with one guy, that's pretty good. Um... So him being able to cast any spell here is very good. This is this is an important decision for us. Him being able to cast any spell is very good because it means that um, crowd's favor is not as good for us. But he did he did say he did pick a card that was greater than four earlier. But that I bet was the flesh to dust, although it could not have been. I think we have to accept him playing a four or less card here. I think we have to say greater than four. Let's see if we guessed right. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Yikes! That is that is pretty strong. I think he would have um, said less than four if he had that or if he had, if he had that before. So um, he probably drew that. And yeah, we're dead here. That's unfortunate. Just gonna yield and make him attack us. Hopefully he's scared of something. 
like a stoke the flames maybe that could take out his flyer and then we would untap and attack for the win. I don't know. We'll just see. Try to make him scared. It's definitely possible that he just attacks us with the two sphinxes, but it's also definitely possible he just goes for the kill. Yeah. Looks like he's going for the kill. So yeah, we're dead here. Um, it was unfortunate. I think I think our deck was pretty good this draft, but you know it definitely had its weaknesses, and um, his deck was also strong. So yeah, um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I can only really give you guys one round if I lose in the first round of the 8-4. Um, but yeah, please subscribe if you want uh, some more content like this, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.